kingdom and back to the African continent. And in the midst of all this uh, experience that I had, learning never stopped. And I told myself that what uh, the white theologians were saying is not sufficient. But when I was young, they told me to shut up. You cannot say much. Yeah. So every question that I had was postponed. That you are not yet mature enough, you are still young. You can't be asking that question. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you get older again, you can't ask that question. You can't ask that question. You can't be saying that question. And by the time I crossed over into my 45, 50 years, I started being told, we must be asking you that question. Mm. And I said, but no, no, these questions that I've had all along have not yet been answered. Now, I, because I'm older in the organization, I can no longer ask. It's now them who must be asking me questions. Absolutely. Then I lost my head. I said, no, 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 no. Mm. From the time I was young, you told me I cannot ask, where is the money going? I cannot ask, are prophets only in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament? I cannot ask, what about the concept of mm. the 135, mm. 2,300 days? I cannot ask about the beasts. I can't ask about prophecies. How come all the prophecies have to do with Europeans and Americans and Africans are not included? I, I cannot ask about how do we distribute tithe within the biblical framework. Mm. I cannot mm. ask, mm. why does the Bible, God says, bring me, bring me a pint of wine? fermented wine into my sanctuary, mm. and etc. You can't ask those questions. You, I can't ask the concept that was when someone is dead, bring a cow here and let the elders of the village wash their hands on the cow and then kill the cow. And I, God, will go and look for the person. I mean, they, they're there in the, mm. in the biblical mm. text. Mm. I cannot mm. ask how Philip was transported mm. from mm. Jerusalem <laughs> to be sitting with the Ethiopian yeah. eunuch and then after baptism, the men disappeared. Mm. I cannot ask how Jesus walked through a wall and he said to touch, touch me you mm -hmm. cannot give me food mm -hmm. i can't eat because i'm a human being i'm not a i'm not a ghost give me fish to eat and all these things and why why is it that when jesus is in bed he's sleeping at the house of a prostitute and we, we, are not, we, we cannot discuss those things because you are desecrating the Bible. And mm -hmm. so, so I grew up, start, I started theology. I read the book, Black Book maybe eight, eight or 18 times. And, and, I'm, and as I'm reading, I'm putting all these circles. Mm -hmm. And at a mature age of my life, now I'm being told, no, no, no. Too late to ask those questions. It's us who must now be asking you those questions. Mm -hmm. what, what have, we be, have you been preaching all along? Mm -hmm. So yes, I've been preaching what I was told mm -hmm. to preach. And I believed this is what I was told to preach. But I've never been given an opportunity to headlong investigate and interrogate mm. that which have come to believe. Absolutely. The bursting of the bubble happened when finally I started studying Hebrew literature, Kemetic literature, mm. going back to Egyptian literature and understanding the miracles. Jesus grew up in Egypt, brought up by the Egyptians, then he went to challenge the Israelites in their own temple. They could not answer him because his knowledge was far much more superior. Mm. Then he began to study and understand that actually it is the Africans mm. who gave Yeshua to the Jews. Literally, mm. we trained him and we gave it over to him. It is the Europeans who nailed Yeshua on the cross, not the Africans. It's the African who carried the cross. And if Jesus was supposed to be, to be a white boy, how could you be hiding as a white boy in Egypt mm -hmm. where everyone could see you? Yeah, How come yeah. Joseph could not be recognized by his brothers yeah. if he was a white man? How can you not recognize? Boom, my head then went off the rails when I mentioned <laughs> the statement that no white man has died for, for a black, a black man. man. True. The black man is still hanging on the cross with the Chinese and the Americans still crucifying the black people on the cross. My Seventh-day Adventist church felt that was too much yeah, to yeah. handle. So they wrote letters. I saw the, the, uh, one the, of the open letters that yeah, was written. So yes, we, this man, we, we, we want to ban him. Mm. And we don't want him to be on our pulpits, mm -hmm. etc. And so they relegated me away. So in my own way also, I'm trying to share my experience. Absolutely. Then Absolutely. we can level the three stories together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I found myself also relegated from the sidelines of the church. Mm -hmm. My marriage broke down also, similarly so. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once that happened, the, the church function on my other side collapsed with it all. So I was pushed out of the church. And being a foreigner also, at one time, even the xenophobic issues mm -hmm. uh, popped up here and there within the same mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. again yeah, yeah, in yeah. terms of marginalization. I last received a salary from the church, 2000, mm -hmm. so to speak. But to date, some of them still want to call me their pastor. And yet they have not given a cent <laughs> to me buying a toothbrush mm -hmm. or buying a, to a, to a, a shoelace.
for my shoes. Mm. Yet the entitlement spirit that it's our pastor runs deep, and because it's our pastor, people think that they own you, they possess you. Not only possess you, they even possess your thinking. They possess your emotions. They possess your faith. They possess your education. You cannot read that. You cannot talk to that one. You cannot be thinking like that. Why? Because you are one of us. Mm -hmm. And if you are one of us, you cannot think. You are beyond us. You're beyond us. Because religion in its own way is a way of creating these cocoons. Where they lock your family, the way you marry, the way you eat, the way you drink, the way you dress, the way you do business, the way you do everything. It's all right here. You cannot work outside of this box. And when I say to myself, there are three types of people who walk on the face of the earth. There are those who think in the box, mm -hmm. locked up there. They can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. There are those who think outside of the box, but their reference is still the box. I woke up one morning and I said, to hell with the box. Okay. <laughs> Burn the box! <laughs> and think! And once I reached that level, of course, I'm not embarrassed to say so, but my church felt, mm, we can't handle you. We can't handle you. So I also found myself outside of the church. And mm. there, you did not make it easy for my life when you decided to call me on the program of, of Abba, Fundis. Abba Fundis. So maybe take us through what went on through your mind when you designed and thought through and designing of that program. We came in with the content, but you, you, you framed in your mind. When you saw Muyema, you saw yourself and you saw me. What was happening in your mind, Absolutely. what you wanted to make out of it? You know, you know Bishop, uh, uh, I have related...